On today's episode, we go pretty deep into a bunch of players, the specific guys that you're scared of or really excited about. They've been on fire or they've been with Matt Nagy in a dumpster, and you go, what is the truth? We're going to look at, at a couple of running backs named Miles, uh, guys like Cooper Cup, Allen Robinson, so stay tuned, check it out, and we've got the Thursday night preview on today's episode. Like, subscribe, and enjoy the show. Today's show is brought to you by Manscaped, the absolute leader in men's grooming products. They have just launched their new performance package 4.0. Do not miss out. Join the 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped and get ready for kickoff by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with the code FOOTBALLERS20. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code FOOTBALLERS20 at manscaped.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. That's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, if you're nasty. I am your host, with the most for today, Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? Joined by my current reigning best friend of all time, Jason mm. Moore. We are less than a month away, Mike. Oh, from Best Friends Day. From Best Friends Day. Uh, I believe it's October 23rd. I believe you are correct. I can't wait to celebrate. <laughs> it's going to be a great one. I don't know if you caught all of Sunday Live, Jason. I did. I did. Great job. There was an unfortunate moment that happened on that show. Remind me. I had to declare Brooks my best friend. Oh, yeah. I mean, I get De it. De facto. Yeah, he was there. I wasn't. No one else was in the room, so I had no friends. That's I, right. He was your best friend in the room for sure. For the what moment. A, what a day for me. <laughs> <laughs> what a day for Mike. He had the richest <laughs> best friend of his life. It's Wednesday, September 29th. This is ooh, episode 1122. 1122. That's not too bad. On today's show, we got buy or sell news and notes, trending or ending, and we're going to break down this incredible Thursday night matchup, which I'm sure Jason will be will be very excited for because he loves these Thursday matchups with bad teams. You know, it's one of my one of my favorite things to do is watch bad football. Um, and actually, but we haven't had any. <laughs> no, well, I don't know. The Eagles kind of uh, the Eagles kind of okay, made a little okay. bit of bad football. But you're right. Even the matchups so far that we thought were going to be duds have been. Uh, mostly great, and the great thing about fantasy football is that even this Thursday night matchup is going to be incredibly important because they all are. That is correct. A couple of house cleaning notes here. We have a brand new giveaway going, footclangiveaway.com. I'm told to push this button. <laughs> I assume we're giving away something from Darren. I am the walrus. A signed jersey. There we go, Foot Clan giveaway. It is free to enter. Just complete a couple things real quick for us. It is Wednesday. That means Spotify Green Room. We will be live. If you want to get in on that, it's very, very fun. It's a it's a loose, free flowing show. A lot of ideas. A lot of fun is happening. Over we've even uh, we've even been calling yes. people to the stage. You can get your voice heard there uh is is a limit on the room size yes so get in early and if you want to get in you download the spotify green room app follow fantasy footballers and you'll be notified we will be live today at three pacific six eastern make sure you're following the podcast wherever you listen please uh instagram.com slash fantasy footballers and on twitter if you want our hot takes of the moment at the ff ballers or you can follow jason at jason ffl i am at ff hitman and Andy is at Andy Holloway. Let's move on. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. Welcome to Buy or Sell. Brooks, the richest man in the world, sets some lines for us, and we say if we're buying or selling. You've been on fire. I, you are my nemesis. I am eight of nine, and that is simply because Raheem Mostert went down to injury in week one. I firmly believe I would be nine for nine. I am seven for nine. I'm right behind you. That's not but bad. It, but it feels bad to be in second place, and the reason for me is Raheem Mostert and George Kittle 
Leaking <laughs> over that line last Got his skin week. on his teeth. Yeah. He made it. Yeah, last week was George Kittle, Robinson, and Robert Woods. Today we are featuring Jonathan Taylor, Indianapolis Colts running back, who seems to continue to get a pass. Like, all, all fantasy football attention. Now, I am a little bit biased. I, I just said it. I admit it. I don't run away from this. That in the conversation of Clyde Edwards-Alaire versus Jonathan Taylor, in our rookie drafts, I had the first overall pick when they came out. I selected Clyde over Jonathan Taylor, uh, even though Taylor was my favorite running back. I just I couldn't argue with the draft capital and the landing spot of Clyde Edwards-Alaire, so I went in on it. And all the fantasy attention has been Clyde Edwards-Alaire is awful. He is terrible. Which I mean, I'm I'm part of, part of that train right now too because he hasn't looked great until week three. But meanwhile, Jonathan Taylor over here. 17 for 56 on the ground, 15 for 51 on the ground, 10 for 64, which that's not bad, but no, no rushing touchdowns in that time. The targets that you saw week one disappeared, but here is the buy or sell, Jason. At Miami, who just got uh, barbecued, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. Bar barbecued? Uh, I was trying to get Peyton us barbecued? Yeah, yeah, I was I trying like, to get there. Yeah, yeah, I think we got there. All right. 70 rushing yards for Johnny Taylor. Will he hit the over, the under? Are you going to buy or sell? I am going to sell this line. And, Ooh. Yeah, sorry, JTT. Um, they lost Quentin Back Nelson. Back to kids, Bob. Uh, yeah, they lost Quentin Nelson, um, which is not going to improve the running game. Uh, despite Peyton Barber, um, I mean, look, he's fresh. Right? <laughs> Peyton Barber was, was <laughs> he does have fresh legs. super fresh for that game. Um you know, I, I do still think that the Miami Dolphins are a a good defense. So the fact that he hasn't hit that line yet loses Quentin Nelson in a bad matchup. I'm going to take the under there. And I'm going to buy. Oh, We already right. have a difference of opinion. And just based on the way that these things have gone, you know to, who to side with. <laughs> uh, but this is – I think this is the moment that you – if you're going to try and get Taylor Lowe, yeah, this is the time to go and do it. I think that he's going to have a solid game. His, his bounce back performance of the year against the Miami Dolphins. So you're more confident in Jonathan Taylor being good rest of season than Clyde Edwards Alaire being good rest of season? Uh yeah. I, I still am. It's funny what a difference week one makes. Because I think that if you swapped week one and week three with these two players, and Clyde came out and had a strong week one. If you, if you gave me the targets that Jonathan Taylor saw in week one for it, Clyde, then yes. But you, just week one. Yes. That's what I mean. It's like, you know, now it's like, oh, yeah, he's good. And then they are running back 29 and 31. They're, they're basically right next to each other um, through three weeks. The next one, Marquise Hollywood Brown, who we've had this drop, but I guess it just has never been used. But it's now deserved. Oh, oh yeah, not a city. <laughs> Thank, that's a shout out to Spitballers. Thank you, Jason. You're welcome. Uh, who has really been on a tear the the last eight or nine games or so? And now I know last week it didn't work out. Three for fifty three, seven targets. Two egregious drops. One, maybe he could have caught it, but the third drop, the the questionable, like okay, the, the difficult drop. All the free pass goes away with the other two drops. Yes. the other two drops means he just had three egregious drops. Yeah, and they were bad because had he come down with just one of those, it would have been another incredible week for Hollywood Brown, taking on the Denver Broncos, who have been a very solid defense. With, I mean, they've, they've played against weaker competition at the quarterback position so far, but Hollywood Brown, does he get back on track? Top 24 wide receiver, Jason. This is a really good line. Um, I think he can easily get there if you look at his last... Uh, He's been great. He, he really has been solid. Uh, even this last game, you look at... Um, he, he was the uh, wide receiver... But seven targets yes, in that game looked good. He was a top 24 guy the first two weeks. Um, and, you know, going back to last year, he was a top 24 guy in half of his weeks the second half of the year. So you'd think buy, but I am going to sell it. I do oh. love Hollywood. <clears throat> Denver's a good team. 
Um, uh, I think they're going to game plan. But really, a big part of this is Rashad Bateman. Their first round wide receiver has been activated. Okay. Um, I think he will be part of this game. And so it's just, you know, we've talked a lot over the last year and a half about the size of the passing pie mm -hmm. for the Ravens. And when you've got to divide that up, you know, it's like, oh, is this going to be Mark Andrews? Is this going to be Hollywood? Now Sammy Watkins. Now you've got Rashad Bateman. Also, Miles Boykin also activated from the injured reserve. So I just think it's going to be split too many directions. I'm going to take the under. Still having a good game, though. Yeah, I have him ranked outside of my top 24 by at least a few spots as of this recording on Wednesday. So I will, I will reluctantly sell on that one because I think it'll be close. Miles Sanders versus Kansas City. Will he see 15 opportunities? He saw 20 week one, 15 on the dot in week two. And then that incredible Eagles offensive game plan where Miles Sanders had two carries, I believe it was, and four targets, and they got boat raced. Do they right that ship and get back to Miles Sanders? It's tough because I think the the reason he didn't get those opportunities was solely because they got boat raced. That was it. It was it was the the Cowboys came out and shellacked them, but they're playing the the Chiefs, the one and two Chiefs who are going to want to the shellac. one and two Chiefs, the last place. Oh, that's right, last place in the division, AFC the only West. one and two team in the division, right? Yes. Um. So I'm gonna let you pick first here. Um. A bold move. Yeah, thank A you. A bold move by you, my best friend. Uh, 15 opportunities. Yeah, I will uh, – I'll buy it. I'll buy it. Sirianni strikes me as a man who uh, – just he, he pulled an Andy Reid, where at the end of the game, he's asked, well, why wasn't Jamal Charles worked back <laughs> into the offense more? And he goes, Oh, wait, he wasn't? I, I better go look, look yeah. at the film of the game that I am in control of. What, what Andy Reid used to do is after the game, he would just say, we need to get Jamal Charles the ball more. <laughs> it's like, this is your choice? It's literally you. You Who are you talking to? Um, so I could totally see that. I could see going back to the tape and being like, okay, we clearly should have given him the ball more. This is a great line again, Brooks. I'm going to take the under. I'm going to sell it just okay. because uh, – 15 is is a, it's a hefty amount. All right. Well, either you're catching up or we are separating. That's right. That was Buy or Sell from PristineAuction.com, the best memorabilia site on the internet. PristineAuction.com, use our registration code BALLERS, and you're going to get a $10 credit. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Titans. Oh, uh oh Wide receiver. Julio jo Jones. <laughs> it's called, I don't know what happened there. Julio Jones is getting treatment on a leg injury. His status is up in the air. Week three, he played a season low 50% of snaps. Julio Jones, the concern with him has been those lower body injuries catching up to him. He's a little bit older. A.J. Brown already week to week. You can't expect him to be there. What are the Titans going to do, Jay? Yeah, I mean, if if he misses, obviously they're going to Derrick Henry everything they can, but the defense is not going to be um, ill-prepared for that. They're not going to be scared of the passing game. I think that Derrick Henry would have a worse game with Julio Jones out, not a better game. He, you already know he's touching the ball a ton. You know what I mean? It's not like, yeah. oh, now he's going to get more opportunities. He was already going to get 25 touches. Um, so I, I think it would just be bad for the entire offense. Um, I, I'm looking up the, the player's name. I can't remember who it was, but he looked really good. Nick Westbrook, I, I kind, I don't know how to say his name. I mean, this is a player that like, I didn't know who it was, but on the field, I was like, he was targeted. He looked good. Um, and I, I think he might be the next man up. I mean, you know, he, he was last week. Yeah, he was last week. Chester Rogers is still there as well, so it, it could go his direction. I don't think you necessarily use any of these guys for fantasy. It's just you've got to be aware. Um, if uh, you're a DFS dart throw right there. Uh, that's, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I will be building some lineups. Yeah, so will I. Uh, the Colts and running back Marlon Mack have agreed to mutually seek a trade per sources. Mack is, uh, go to my camera, go to my camera. Fully healthy. <laughs> bink, 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 bink. He's fully healthy after last year's Achilles tear. I don't know if anybody can really be fully healthy. That remains to be seen. Maybe Marlon Mack can be the guy. 
that changes everything for fantasy football that makes us look at Cam Akers and go, it actually can happen. So hopefully, hopefully Marlon Mack is actually fully healthy and can get something done. I don't know who's trading for Marlon Mack right now. Oh, the Niners. <laughs> I mean, they, no, don't, they don't have 22 running backs. Stop. They're they're trying to make it to all of the running backs. But, uh, you know, there are a couple teams that maybe could be helped out. I, you know, the Ravens of the Niners come to mind. But they both teams have brought in players. They Marlon Mack does not strike me as, like, the answer. You know, they're sitting there struggling with their hodgepodge of – backups and then being like oh well I didn't know I could have Marlon Mack off the Achilles what's tough is um so this information came out and I would s believe that this is very closely tied with he was a healthy scratch yes I would imagine that the team did that because they're trying they are trying to trade him how long does he have to say stay a healthy scratch and can't prove that he has juice left, so a, a team is interested when a running back injury does happen. That remains to be seen. Are you uh, are you stashing him in deeper leagues or not? I, I have not personally thought to stash him in a okay. deeper league. I think that the situation where a team would – if they're trading for him, it's going to be nothing. I mean, they're going to be giving up a sixth, seventh swap. Correct. Um, or something like that. So the investment won't be there. And I, I haven't seen enough on the field to determine his health. And this is such a weird situation because, you know, if he was a free agent, teams would be bringing him in for sure, working him out, putting him through their doctors. But when he's part of another team, it's like they just have to trust those guys and then give right. up capital for him. So I'm not sure a deal gets done. Uh, if a deal does not get done, he'll probably be a healthy scratch and then either activate it or cut. The Ravens activated wide receivers Rashad Bateman, their first-round rookie, and Miles Boykin from the injured reserve, like Jason said. They will be practicing. It remains to be seen if they will be ready to go by game time. But Is Bateman worth picking up? I That's why I brought him up on the waiver show. I wasn't sure if he would be activated this quickly, but that's great news. Rashad Bateman is an electric rookie uh, that they drafted in the first round. And so I, th I think that for the long haul, you should probably stash him and see what happens. Bengals wide receiver T. Higgins, his shoulder injury persists, was listed as a non-participant, and they're going to play on Thursday. So The Thursday night football matchup makes it very unlikely T. Higgins plays because it's a double whammy. Not only is it a short week of rest, uh, granted he missed last week, uh, but it's shorter to this game time, but then if he misses – you you get you know even more time uh, for the next game, so I would uh, I would expect him to be absent. That was today's news and notes presented by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. Download Sleeper, join their breaking alerts channel. It's faster than every other source. Trending or ending? That's a fabulous graphic. <laughs> Good work, Bcat. Uh, trending or ending? Mr. Joseph Burrow of the Cincinnati Bengals. There was some hope over the offseason that this could be the breakout for for Joey B. The pass catchers are there. I mean, T. Higgins has been banged up, obviously, in the short season so far. But quarterback 18, quarterback 25, quarterback 14, he's – Limited on the ground. Now, to his credit, he did have an incredible play. Uh, I, I don't know if you caught that one last week where he evaded the rush. I, I think he broke like three tackles on this play, ends up gaining five yards or so. It was a third and long, so it doesn't like change things, but watching it was, was a very positive sign of saying, oh, good, good for you, Joe, trusting that leg, looking healthy. I, I liked to see it. He's throwing touchdowns, two, two, and three, but he's only averaging 213 passing yards. This is Joe, – Joe Burrow right here is almost the poster child of this is what happens when you don't run exactly. in fantasy football. He's been a solid quarterback. The, like seven touchdowns over three games? Yeah, he's played very – That's fantastic. He's played very, very well. Um, it, it's, it's interesting. If you were with us through the whole offseason – 
early, 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 you know, we, we launched the Ultimate Draft Kit, uh, Super Bowl Sunday, um, as far as pre-sale, and then it comes out in, in June. We had Joe Burrow as a breakout potential because we all see it. Yeah. He's an excellent quarterback. He's going to be outstanding. So trending or ending on a long enough timeline, this is definitely ending. He's not going to be bad. He's going to be good for fantasy. Um, the problem is we ended up in, moving him all the way to the bust category because we saw this kind of a beginning to the season where – he's not going to be able to run the ball. It, it, this time last year, he was averaging 17 rushing yards a game. He only has nine yards on the ground through three weeks. It's completely absent. Um, and, and I would also say, I would add to the concern that surprisingly, the, the Bengals are playing at a very slow pace. They're not just slow, Jason. The, the Zach Taylor passing attack that we're used to, the volume, that's not. They are extremely run heavy, and they're moving slowly. So th that's what that's what this comes down to for me. Is that trending or is that going to be ending as Joe Burrow moves, moves further into the season? I I think that it will continue trending for a while. Uh, by the end of the year, I think that the offense will click. He will be fully healthy. This was a wicked knee injury he had. Right. And even though he's obviously healthy enough, he's out there. He's playing. The recovery timeline on that, it's it's going to get stronger and stronger. So I'm gonna, you know, he's got a matchup this week. If you want to throw him in there against Jacksonville, okay. You know, I I I could see him having a good week. Um, but I'm gonna say that this continues trending. His passing yardage has been mediocre at best. 207 yards two weeks ago, 172 yards last week. They're going to establish it with Joe Mixon. I'm gonna say this continues trending uh, for at least the next half a season. All right, the gas man running low, running on empty, as uh, a great poet once said through song. It's not been great for Miles Gaskin. He has not finished inside the top 24. He has, in fact, finished outside of the top 30 for two of his three games. Now, to uh, in his defense, things kind of broke down. Tua got injured. In week two, they got shut out, and now we're on Jacoby Brissett. The targets are there, Jason, but this – you don't want – where you drafted Miles Gaskin, in the fifth round or wherever you got him, you weren't trying to draft a, a Naeem Hines where all he does is get four to five targets a week, and you're hoping that one of those turns into a score. You were hoping that Miles Gaskin would get those targets and nine to – 12 carries on the ground on a weekly basis and that turn into points it has not happened so far so where are you on the gas man yeah I, I feel like I've I've been pretty steady with the gas man from the get-go he's a flex worthy player he gets enough targets enough receptions where you can put him in your lineup I don't think it's ever going to be special there was hope that he was some you know true workhorse back he has not been getting the goal line that was another fear right now so far red zone opportunities for Miami's running backs Gaskin has one uh, which is the same as uh, Salvan Ahmed and then Malcolm Brown has four um, and Ahmed has two targets in the red zone so that's his biggest problem that being said um, while I think the trend continues most of the season of him being not great not bad not terrible okay um but not great I think this is a good week like I you know I had him originally as my start of the week for tomorrow oh uh, which is obviously took a pivot yeah I it's it's tough because I I think he's gonna have a, a game worthy of starting but not a game worthy of being like start of the week if, if you if you look at Gaskin this last week the opportunities were there for him uh he had 19 total opportunities 13 carries six targets and he turned six targets into nine receiving yards I think that is abnormal um if he gets another six targets this next week he'll probably end up with you know four for 40 or something around there so um, I think you can start him, but this is a trend that's going to continue. The talent is there. He does have four runs of 15-plus yards, which is tied for the most with Nick Chubb. So you, if you want to bet on the talent eventually rising to the top, Miles Gaskin would, would be where you go for the Miami backfield, but I don't, know if they, I don't know if they see it that way with their new offensive philosophy. And So, Jason, before we move on to our next player, I want to thank today's sponsor, Direct TV, 
We know you want that football because you're listening to a football podcast about a game, about a game, which means you love football and you want all of the games and you want to watch them live, but maybe you can't get, get direct TV where you live. That is no longer a problem because you can stream the 2021 NFL Sunday ticket on your favorite devices. No satellite required. NFL Sunday ticket TV lets you follow your favorite team. No matter where you live, watch every out of market NFL game every Sunday afternoon, live on your favorite devices. Get that direct TV red zone channel, direct TV fantasy zone. Uh, you could, like I said, you get to stream with no satellite required. Get shortcuts. You can see replays of the entire game in less than 30 minutes. You want to know what happened to Justin Fields? You want to know quickly? It's bad, but you could go back and you, you can get that done. Know. Don't say that in front of Jay Grizz. You can get that done in about under 30 minutes. You can do a customizable game mix, watch up to four games at the exact same time. Go online to nflsundayticket.tv slash sundayready to see if you're eligible. And pro tip, use promo code BALLERS2021 at checkout to save 15%. Again, to see if you're eligible for the NFL Sunday Ticket streaming package, go to nflsundaytickettv slash sundayready and use the code BALLERS2021 to save 15% when you sign up. And we want to thank BlockFi, a great crypto financial service. Uh, I've used BlockFi for a long time. Whether you're a crypto pro or you're looking to get into crypto, uh, you can finally earn Bitcoin the easy way. There is a BlockFi Rewards Visa Signature Card. It's the easiest way to get Bitcoin just by making everyday purchases. Uh, you can grow it. You know, you, you get your groceries. You pay your mm -hmm. bills. You fill up at the gas station. Kaching, you're getting 1.5% back in Bitcoin on all qualifying purchases with no reward limits. Plus, there's no annual fee, no foreign transaction fees, just Bitcoin on every single qualifying purchase. You can ramp it up. Over the last decade, Bitcoin, uh, according to Yahoo Finance, has been the best performing asset. And you're, go you know, that's. That's the, uh, I want the best performing asset as my reward. I prefer it. And right now, the Foot Clan could get a bonus of $25 in crypto after you make your first purchase with the credit card when you sign up at blockfi.com slash footballers. That's a $25 bonus in crypto deposited right into your account after you make your first purchase, but you have to use our URL. That's blockfi.com slash footballers to start earning Bitcoin back on all your purchases today. BlockFi.com slash footballers. Not all will be eligible. Geographic, reg regulatory, and underwriting restrictions apply. Fees and terms are subject to change. Additional terms of service at BlockFi.com. I realize, Jason, um, that as we're about to talk about this next player, Mr. Allen Robinson of the Chicago Bears, if you have never watched an episode of this show on our YouTube, when it's down to the two of us, and you just tuned in, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Thank you. You may have noticed there's there's a giant cardboard bear, the cardboard bear extraordinaire himself, Mr. Jay Grizz, over there holding down the number three spot. That would be and really was, fun to just go through the whole episode, <laughs> never mention Jay Grizz, never point out, why, just have an episode that's not talked about. And if you're new, you just like, what is happening? Why are they talking fantasy with a giant grizzly bear. So he fills in from time to time. And Jay Grizz, cover your ears. Allen Robinson, Bustorama this year so far, has not finished inside the top 44 at the wide receiver position, has not surpassed double digit points in a half point PPR scoring format. Oh, my goodness gracious. His average depth of target is an abysmal 7.9 yards. Allen Robinson, once elite deep threat, not being used like that currently. Uh, my thoughts on Matt Nagy's ability to wield an offense are well known on this podcast. They're really good, right? What, the budget mag budget magician? Mm -hmm. You really like him? Yeah, he's he's tremendous. He he did excellent work with uh with Justin Fields this past week. But we need this is important. This is a, a big one. Trending or ending, Allen Robinson, is it gonna get better or is is it over? I had a dream last night <gasps> Ooh. and Justin Fields balled out in week in his second start. Like Honestly, he should he with should. his matchup. He but he looked I mean I've 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 watched a little bit again of this game and 
I agree that Nagy has Nagy did not have a good game plan, did not make good adjustments, and credit needs to be given to the defense, who was dominating the offensive line and at the same time dominating the wide receivers with their cornerback matchups. Like, like it was a perfect storm of crap, but still Justin Fields played terrible. Like what he was in a difficult situation and he he did not rise to the occasion. Yeah, the, the problem of Matt Nagy being out completely outmatched, he couldn't figure out how to stop the pass rush from the Cleveland Browns, which <clears throat> that's – I, I get it, that they're ferocious. You know, the, the players that they have, the Browns' defensive line should be feared. But then the answer was, well, we got to do quick passes, so let's have everybody run button hooks. And the, But the defense knew what was going to happen. So all the DBs are just jumping every route. Meanwhile, the offensive line is getting annihilated by Cleveland. So I, I Justin Fields was objectively terrible. But I don't know any I don't know any quarterback that would have succeeded in that in the situation that he was put in. So like now, Andy Dalton, Nick Foles would not have succeeded there. But Allen Robinson, Allen Robinson, what are we doing here? He is terrifying. Yes, um, there have been you know it's it's one of those. Do you trade for Allen Robinson? And and it's it's a scary proposition because. It wasn't like it was just Justin Fields. You know, he had Andy Dalton the first Correct. two weeks. He stunk the first two weeks. He happened to get a touchdown um, in week two. Should have had a second one. He, sure, should have had a, a second one, dropped it. But he he had that touchdown with a total of 24 yards. Uh, he was the wide receiver 45 with a touchdown. That's hard to do. Um, week one, he stunk. Week three, he stunk. And this offense looks putrid. So, is it going to continue? And I believe, no, it will not. It will not continue. Ending. I believe it is oh ending. Oh, my goodness. I know this. Is the, the fantasy football community just let out a gigantic simultaneous exhale. Allen Robinson last week had six targets. Mm -hmm. That's not great. That's not Allen Robinson. Justin Fields last week had six completions. Like, the, the target market share was actually really good <laughs> right. for Allen Robinson. He is the first read. No one, no one in their right mind could possibly question the talent of Allen Robinson. He is the clear number one. He is extremely targeted. He is on an NFL team. I mean, it, it <laughs> yes, he is on an right, NFL team. But like like the Jacksonville Jaguars <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, and there and but there is always going to be value. Like there's no way that the way they got shellacked by the Browns this last week is just what happens every week. I mean, they played Detroit this this coming they, week. They, not only do they play Detroit this week, then they play the Las Vegas Raiders, who are a good defense, but they're giving up yards. The Green Bay Packers, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, well, they're a solid defense. They're allowing a ton of yards through the air. So this is a – it's lined up here for Allen Robinson to back or to bounce back. Yes, and I and I believe that Allen Robinson will bounce back. Now, does that mean that he's going to be a wide receiver one? He's finished the last two years as a wide receiver one. That doesn't currently look in the cards, but I still don't think it's that much further. I don't, I'm not saying he's like a, a, you know, a wide receiver three – and, you know, he's going to be okay, a flex consideration. I believe that he should still be viewed as an every week start. And I know that how hard that would be because the same way that you have NBA Jam rules of three great games in a row. Correct. Uh, you, you stick with him. He's had three putrid games in a row. And so it, it's, it's fearful. Um, like on, uh, for a real world example, I have Allen Robinson on my uh, currently disastrous run in our league of record. A lot of that disaster due to Allen Robinson uh, just permeating his stench throughout my roster. But I have Tim Patrick on my bench, who now is clearly the number two with uh, K.J. Hamler uh, unfortunately tearing his ACL. I have Michael Pittman, who's pulling in a 30-plus percent target share the past two weeks. I, I have to make a decision of... Do I play these guys over Allen Robinson? So with the information you know, uh, what we've talked about here today, where are you leaning between those three players? I'm leaning that Robinson is the three of that group. Uh, 
But it, it, that's because I'm – that's why I'm so glad to go to you. You don't have Robinson on your league of record team. No, I do not. And so it's I – It's been great. <laughs> like, so I, I'm with the fantasy community right now. I get it. This is my occupation. I'm supposed to be able to give you unbiased information. But Allen Robinson is destroying me, and when someone is destroying you, it's hard to not have a personal bias. Yeah, yeah. It, it, Save me, Jason. It is really, really tough. Um, I think the fear goes back to 2018. If you look at the 2018 uh, version of Chicago, Allen Robinson, he finishes the wide receiver 41. Granted, he missed three games, so it would have been better than that, but it, it was mostly mediocre. And uh, That was his first year off the ACL. Yes, that was his first year off the ACL, so he wasn't quite right. And, I, you know, there shouldn't be anything hindering him uh, outside of if the offense completely collapses. All right, and Justin Fields, like, when he came in against the Bengals, I know that the stat line wasn't there, but I, to my eyes, Justin Fields was not terrible. Like, it, he played... He played perfectly fine and capable that week. Moving it on, though, the Rams wide receivers. My goodness, there is a disparity. The Koopa Cup of Coffee, King Koopa Cup of Coffee, coming in. Is he really the wide receiver one? Yes, I mean, he is. That would make sense when, you, <laughs> when you're dominating the way that Cooper Cup is. Uh, a wide receiver one all three weeks, including a number one and a number two finish and a half-point scoring format. Meanwhile... Bobby Trees, Robert Woods, Mr. Reliable, Mr. Safety, Mr. High Floor. He's living in the basement. He has not finished inside the top 40 at the position. Trending or ending, Jason? Trending. For both. Trending for both. Um, okay. Uh, th this is uh, – I, I think there's been enough um, – sample size here obviously three games very minimal but we only have the entire the entirety of most seasons are 16 games so you have to go on short trends you have to make a decision as to what you're seeing on the field and it is so clear uh it's it's like I think to pivot off and to say well if you look at history Robert Woods is uh, you know a, a heavily targeted guy a great route runner solid hands all the all those things are true um, but if you're just going on history and not what you're seeing on the field, he's not the number one. He's not the guy that Stafford's looking for in a pinch. Um, and that, you know, as the course of the season goes on, there will be games where because of what Cooper Cup has been doing, he's going to be double teamed. He's going to be taken out and schemed out of they're going to say, make Robert Woods hurt us and Robert Woods will have the game. Um, but over the course of this season, this is Cooper Cup's wide receiving room now. He walks in there with a crown on. Um, and a blazing hot cup of coffee. Oh, of course. He, well, two. One, he, he gives to Matthew Stafford. Oh, yes. and then he And then he goes into the wide receiver room. So I've heard that he can actually take a cold cup of coffee and just place it in his hands. That, and that thing goes right to 120 degrees. It is actually true. Um, That's his superpower. That Warming, is, but it only works for coffee, though. Yeah, I think he is actually no the other owner of Ember. The coffee mug. He's just um, he's lent his gifts. I based out. these off of my hands. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. See, he's been great. Now I've had a lot of questions. Uh, I, I I had the thing to remember, and we've brought it up a little bit about mm -hmm. you know would you? I I talked last year. One of the things I wanted to remember was a month into the season, the wide receivers are absolutely magma on fire. I want to trade them for top notch value. I want to trade them as if I am trading the season-long wide receiver one, people will pay through the nose. And does that apply to Cooper Cup? Because I think this is a trend. I don't think this is going away. Uh, he is going to be the wide receiver one for one of the best offenses in the league. Uh, and that means he's not going to be bad. He's not. It's, it's, this is not an end. This is a trend. And yes, I would trade him. I would absolutely trade if you can get that monstrous high-value huge swing if you can turn you know Cooper Cup into you know with, with a package of players into Dalvin Cook or uh, you know a, a Derrick Henry or um, someone like that I, I would do it because wide receivers even the best are inconsistent they will have their down games and Cooper Cup has not had one yet which means they're coming um, but over the course of the season um, wh what do you think from here on out, forget – obviously, fantasy finish, he's probably going to be like a, a top six wide receiver based on these first three weeks alone. 
But from week four through 17, where would you slot Cooper Cup in as the wide receiver what? Oh, man. I would put in – so let's – top 10 is easy. Top five is probable. And I think I would – I think I'll stop at top five. It, so, you know, th that wide receiver four to five range. Back a couple years ago, when he finished as the wide receiver four in half point scoring, he did have, you know, five putrid games uh, in that, well, six if you count week one. So six putrid games, a bunch of incredible games, and then just three meh games. So like you said, Jason, the, the, a poor game will happen for Cooper Cup, but if he's if he's balancing those things out with this level of performance with and Matthew Stafford is just such a better quarterback than Jared Goff and is transforming this this Rams offense into one of the best in football. The the Rams do you, the Rams to me are the best team in the NFL. They are easily the best team okay. in the NFL to me. Because while the Chiefs I still would take their offense over the Rams, um I don't know that I take any defense over the Rams. When you have basically the like the two best defensive players on the same team, it's not really fair. It's we don't the, the that just brings up an interesting interesting conversation of we're not talking Tyree Kill though uh, right now, but he's been schemed out two weeks in a row. Tyree Kill had we thought had made that jump into being a, like a consistent superstar on a weekly basis because you know that. Any one play, he can house it. That's just mm -hmm. part of his skill set. But two weeks in a row, and teams that, uh, in week two, a team that should not have been able to scheme Tyreek Hill out of the game plan, they did. Was that concerning for you at all? Nope, not at all. <laughs> um, I can't stress this enough, Foot Clan. You need to know this with, with wide receivers. All wide receivers are inconsistent. Go Cooper, for the Cooper guys. Cup or Tyreek Hill? Tyreek Hill, exactly. If you could trade, okay. you can definitely get this trade to go through. You can trade in, in I would say, at least 40% of leagues right now, you could trade Cooper Cup for Tyreek Hill straight up. You've got three back-to-back -back weeks of domination from Cooper Cup, two back-to-back -back weeks of disappointment from Tyreek Hill. Yeah, I'm taking the Chiefs offense. I'm taking the history of Tyreek Hill, the All speed. Right. Tyreek Hill in 2018 was the wide receiver one. There was not a better wide receiver in fantasy than Tyree Kill that year, and he had seven games outside the top twenty-four. You want a wide receiver who can win you weeks. You want, and, that, and both these guys can. But I think that is the best example. I would one hundred percent trade Cooper Cup for Tyree Kill. All right, let's get into Thursday. Thursday night breakdown. Oh, brother, we got a barn burner this Thursday night. The Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. I should say the 0-3 the oh Jaguars and the 2-1 and one Cincinnati Bengals. DraftKings Sportsbook has the line at the Bengals minus 7. The over-under is sitting at 46.5 points. That puts the Jaguars team implied total under 20 points. I mean, we got a battle of overall number one first round picks. We got Joey Burrow. We got Trevor Lawrence. That we got a rematch from a national championship game uh, just a couple years ago. Trevor Lawrence completing a league low fifty percent of his passes. It the the rookie quarterbacks this season. It's making me sad, Jason. It's making me sad. I was so freaking pumped oh, coming yeah. into the season. It was. We have, we have an influx here of incredible talent. Now we know that statistically, it it's not very likely that every single one of these guys is going to work out. And we're, we're I'm not by any stretch calling someone a bust three games into their career. But with Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Mac Jones has been fine, and then just the Justin Fields experience. There's just I'm yeah Mac Jones I'm has very been disappointed. Mac Jones has been very good for. Um, the NFL real life football yeah but not for fantasy he's um and I feel bad for his interception count because like so many of these interceptions aren't his fault the at all John it's hitting guys in the hands and they pop it up um but anyways back to the game Trevor Lawrence Joe Burrow 
Are we playing anybody here? Are you are you willing to stream Trevor Lawrence? Are you willing to stream Joe Burrow? I'm willing against to this Jags. Defense? I, I would I would be willing to stream Joe Burrow against the Jags defense. Um, last year they were the 29th against the quarterback position. This year they're 20th. Kyler had some really head scratching plays that I I think made the Jaguars look better than they are when he just bombed it poorly into double coverage. Um, Joe Burrow could have a very good game this this week. I I think he is in consideration. I wouldn't start Tre uh, Trevor Lawrence probably this whole season. I mean, I, I don't think a matchup is going to cause me to start him. He has made so many boneheaded plays. He's not really running the ball. Thankfully, he, he, he ran a little bit more. You know, week one was terrifying because week one, it looked like he was going to be completely pocket locked, um, which we know is uh, pocket locked. a death knell for fantasy. Like Polly? Sure. Polly, Polly, pocket locked. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, he did have 20 rushing yards both weeks, which is which is that's the one thing that's if you're going to start Trevor Lawrence over the course of the season, it will be because he starts getting his legs going, um, but not enough so far. So he's out. Joe Burrow, I would rather not play. Obviously, Mixon is in. Yeah, Joe Mixon is in the third most touches at the running back position. We were talking about how the Bengals have gone extremely run heavy. On the other side of the ball, you have James Robinson, you have Carlos Hyde. Now, James Robinson came through with a solid fantasy mat or uh, finish this past week. I had mentioned earlier how th through three weeks, it looks like the Cardinals' defense could be highly susceptible to the running backs. Uh, Dalvin Cook just manhandled them. James Robinson looked great, but something to – pay attention to before you push all the chips in on James Robinson. Last week, 59% of the snaps, which was down from week two, you saw his running back attempt share drop from 85% to 65%. He did get all of the running back targets this past week, but I don't think, while it was good to see that Robinson is not just completely a footnote for Urban Meyer, I'm not celebrating running through the street saying that James Robinson is back to an every week play. I'm fully confident in Robinson as my running back too. Are you there with uh, the week three finish or are you still hesitant? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly bought into him being the guy. He is like 65% down to 65% is really, really good. 65% of the running back carries means you are the clear leader um, and a hundred percent of the targets honestly I think James Robinson is going to be good for fantasy from here on out I you can start him in this matchup I, I don't by any means think he's going to get touchdowns very often like he did this last game so I wouldn't overreact to the fantasy finish of last week but Robinson is he's involved enough he has as many scrimmage yards through three weeks as Ezekiel Elliott um, and and they need him because their team's not good and he is Okay, okay. Well, at the wide receiver position, you're playing Jamar Chase, you're playing Tyler Boyd over on the other side. And T. Higgins, if he's actually starting, would you play no, him? No, I no. Would not I would not start him. Okay. Uh, the I shoulder, don't think he'll play. But Yeah, if, if he's active, it just basically – if he's active, it means I'm probably not going to play Tyler Boyd. That's what that means to okay. me. Assuming he's gone – Tyler Boyd's in. Jamar Chase has to be in no matter what. He has he has four touchdowns on only 11 receptions. He's looked very, very good. Another one. I straight up apologized to uh, Jamar Chase sort yesterday. Of. No, sort I of. straight up apologized. Yeah, was a, that was a sort of. Full apology. 100% apology. So that was like a, I'll like give a, you a 80, one 85 No, you got to be at least 95. I'm going. Let's I'm, go to the judge. judge. I'm down. I'm down to 80%. Okay. It's dropping by judge, the moment. What would you qualify my apology percentage at for Jamar Chase on yesterday's episode. I think it's closer to 55. To oh! 35. You, s <laughs> you son of a... Oh! oh, man. Okay, well, I know who's Brooks not best friends with <laughs> anymore. Um, well, if to follow that up, then, this is a great segue. I would trade Jamar Chase immediately. Um, <laughs> solely because, again, I mean, 
I love Cooper Cup. He's been in like all my DFS lineups, my starts of the week. He's he, I, I, I love everything about Cooper Cup. This isn't a slight against Jamar Chase. It's to say he's had four touchdowns on 11 receptions. He's overproducing. He looks like he's going to be the next great, you know, you can sell him as last year's Justin Jefferson, a league winner. And the reality is I, we haven't seen him do on the field what Justin Jefferson did yet. And, and he's got to do it for a long time. Whenever you trade a guy and you get the price for them, if you capitalize on like you're maximizing Jamar Chase and people are paying through the nose for him, then so what if he keeps it up? You you get the value. It, whenever you trade a guy high, it just means you're you're going to end up winning even if the guy stays high. On the other side, Marvin Jones, he's, he, is he an every week flex at this point? He seems like it. I mean – this is where the three-game sample size is a little bit worrisome because you saw so much to DJ Chark in uh, one game. But, I mean, nine targets, 11 targets, eight targets, and he's good. Yeah, you know I mean, what I mean? Like, Marvin Jones is a quality wide receiver, we, a known commodity in the NFL. I think you have to start him. He would be an interesting, like, Marvin Jones or Allen Robinson. I, I can't imagine not man. going with Marvin Jones right now. Man, that, that of a start-sit decision? Yeah. Yeah, that's – oh, my goodness. You're you're probably right. Marvin Jones sitting at about 25% of the, the Jacksonville targets, which is fantastic. DJ Chark is – I mean, if you want to fly, I guess you can try and, and do that. He's been a top 24 wide receiver two of the three weeks, completely bombed against Denver. And, I mean, you need him to catch a touchdown, essentially. And then LaVisca Chenault – what do you do with Visk? Are you holding? You Are you moving on? Shall not play him. <laughs> should, should, uh, should you roster him? Um, I I don't want to. I I mean I I get it. He could be better. He's got the manufactured touches, but his his opportunities come so close to the line of scrimmage that he's pretty much a running back, right? Like he's not being utilized as a wide receiver. He's being used as a gadget player. And if you think about that and you compare him to a running back because of where he's getting the ball and you look at running back, op how many opportunities do you want a running back to have on a weekly basis? Like where, where do you feel good about them? Uh, Total I would, opportunities, targets and, and rushing. I teams. would feel good if they were at, at the at least 13 mark. Yeah, that's, that's about where I am, 13. And if you look at, you know, Visca last week had four targets, seven targets the week before. If all these, like seven targets isn't necessarily bad, but if they're all at the line of scrimmage, right. think of them like, you know, there's seven handoffs with a, with a PPR bump. And if you're in full PPR, he's a little bit better because you do get the, you know, if he gets one catch for, you know, one yard, right. you get a full point, but um, I, I'm not excited about him. The tight ends, CJ Uzama, you're not playing him. They oh. just traded for Dan Arnold. The postman. The, the postman. I'm not sure if he delivers in Jacksonville or not, but they did trade for him. You can't. I can't imagine you're playing him this week, but he is on at least the dumpster dive tight end watch because James, Osa uh, James O'Shaughnessy was running a bunch of routes. He was getting targeted on these routes. Last week it was, uh, I believe, Jacob Hollister, a.k.a. Abercrombie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But they just made a move for Dan Arnold, so let's let's see if they keep using the tight end position. Let's see if the postman can come through. Would you pick him up instead? Like, if you're in uh, tight end purgatory, you, and if you know. I, Yeah, if I'm in a deeper league where I have at least six bench spots, then, yeah, I'd be willing to pick him up and just see what happens. Just wait and see. Yeah, I get that. I, I feel bad that we didn't get the postman drop. You know, because that's what, I was that's waiting what you for get. our producer. But that's what you get when you mess with the postman. That's right. Thank you. Man, that needs to be a full song. Uh, there'll be a straight up banger. I know a musician I could talk to about that. Yeah, me too. The postman. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, that's gonna do it for today's show. Want to thank today's uh, one of today's sponsor, Pristine Auction, the best memorabilia site online. Items that were won last night on Pristine Auction. A signed Debo Samuel jersey for just 50 bones. A signed Keenan Allen jersey for just $79. My champion is up on the wall. It was graced by Antonio Gibson's hands. Antonio Gibson, the hands capable of housing a 73-yard screen. Ron Rivera, get him the ball. 
Uh, but Pristine Auction, if you want to check that out, it's it's a fun website to browse. PristineAuction.com. Use our registration code BALLERS, and you're going to get a $10 credit. Oh, that's going to do it for today's show. I hope you enjoy. Uh, it, it, I hope you were successful in your waivers. And see us on uh, Spotify Green Room tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. We will see you there. If not, we'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.